Hey everyone, today is my first day back in the office after taking parental leave. It was really special to me to be with Priscilla in August after she was born and to get to take Max on some more adventures. Now, while I was out on leave, I spent a lot of time with our teams on the issue of Russian interference in the US elections. And I made some decisions on the next steps that we're gonna be taking, and I wanna share those with you now. First, let me say this. I care deeply about the democratic process and protecting its integrity. Facebook's mission is all about giving people a voice and bringing people closer together. Those are democratic values and we're proud of them. I don't want anyone to use our tools to undermine democracy. That's not what we stand for. The integrity of our elections is fundamental to democracy around the world. That's why we built teams dedicated to working on election integrity and preventing governments from interfering in the elections of other nations. And as we've shared before, our teams have found and shut down thousands of fake accounts that could be attempting to influence elections in many other countries, including recently in the French elections. Now, I wish I could tell you that we're going to be able to stop all interference, but that just wouldn't be realistic. There will always be bad actors in the world, and we can't prevent all governments from all interference. But we can make it harder. We can make it much harder. And that's what we're going to focus on doing. So today, I want to share the steps that we're taking to protect election integrity and make sure that Facebook is a force for good in democracy. And while the amount of problematic content that we've found so far remains relatively small, any attempted interference is a serious issue. So here are nine things that we're going to be working on over the next few months. First, we are actively working with the U.S. government on its ongoing investigations into Russian interference. We've been investigating this for many months now, and for a while we had found no evidence of fake accounts linked to, Russian, uh, linked to Russia running ads. And when we recently uncovered this activity, we provided that information to the special counsel. We also briefed Congress. And this morning, I directed our team to provide the ads we've found to Congress as well. Now, as a general rule, we're going to be limited in what we can discuss publicly about ongoing law enforcement investigations. So we may not always be able to share all of our findings publicly. But we support Congress in deciding how to best use this information to inform the public and we expect the government to publish its findings when their investigation is complete. Second, we will continue our own investigation into what happened on Facebook in this election. We may find more, and if we do, we will continue to work with the government on it. We're looking to foreign actors, including additional Russian groups and other former Soviet states, as well as organizations like the campaigns, to further our own understanding of how they used all of our tools. These investigations will take some time, but we will continue our thorough review. Third, going forward, and maybe the most important step we're taking, is we're going to make political advertising more transparent. So when someone buys political ads on TV or other media, they're required by law to disclose who paid for them. But you still don't know if you're seeing the same messages as everyone else. So we're going to bring Facebook to an even higher standard of transparency. Not only will you have to disclose which page paid for an ad, but we will also make it so you can visit an advertiser's page and see the ads that they're currently running to any audience on Facebook. We will roll this out over the coming months, and we will work with others to create a new standard for transparency in online political ads. Fourth, we will strengthen our own ad review process for political ads. Now, to be clear, it has always been against our policies to use any of our tools in a way that breaks the law. And we have many controls already in place to prevent this. But we can do more. Most ads are bought programmatically through our apps and website without an advertiser ever speaking to someone at Facebook. And that's what happened here. But even without our employees directly involved in the sales, we can do better. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we're going to catch all bad content in our system. We don't check what people say before they say it, and frankly, I don't think society should want us to. Freedom means you don't have to ask for permission first, and that by default, you can say what you want. And if you break our community standards or you break the law, then you're going to face consequences afterwards. We won't catch everyone immediately, but we can make it harder to try to interfere. Fifth, we're increasing our investment in security and specifically in election integrity. In the next year, we will more than double the team working on election integrity. In total, 
We'll add more than 250 people across all of our teams focused on the security and safety of our community. Sixth, we will expand our partnerships with election commissions around the world. We already work with electoral commissions in many countries to help people register to vote and to learn about the issues. And we're going to keep doing that. And now we're also going to establish a channel to inform election commissions of the online risks that we've identified in their specific elections. Seventh, we will increase sharing of threat information with other technology and security companies. We already share information on bad actors on the internet through programs like Threat Exchange, and now we're going to explore ways that we can share more information about anyone in attempting to interfere with elections. Now, it's important that tech companies collaborate on this because it is almost certain that any actor trying to misuse Facebook will also be trying to abuse other internet platforms too. Eighth, we are working proactively to strengthen the democratic process. Beyond pushing back against threats, we will also create more services to protect our community while engaging in political discourse. For example, we're looking at adapting our anti-bullying systems to protect against political harassment as well. And we're scaling our ballot information tools to help more people understand the issues. Finally, we've been working to ensure the integrity of the German elections this weekend. From taking action against thousands of fake accounts to partnering with public authorities like the Federal Office for Information Security to sharing security practices with the candidates and parties. We're also examining the activity of accounts we've removed, and we have not yet found a similar type of interference effort in Germany. Now, this is incredibly important, and we've been focused on this for a while. Now, at the same time, it's important not to lose sight of some of the more straightforward and, and larger ways that Facebook plays a role in elections. And these effects operate at much larger scales of a hundred times or a thousand times bigger uh, than what we're discussing here today. In 2016, people had billions and billions of interactions and open discussions on Facebook that may have never happened before offline. Candidates had direct channels to communicate with tens of millions of citizens and campaigns spent tens of millions organizing and advertising online to get their messages out further. And we organized get out the vote efforts that helped as many as 2 million people register to vote who might not have voted otherwise. Many of these dynamics were new in this election and at a much larger scale than had ever been seen before in history at a minimum. And they were much larger in scale than any of the interference that we have found. But we are in a new world. It is a new challenge for internet communities to have to deal with nation states attempting to subvert elections. But if that's what we must do, then we are committed to rising to the occasion. Our sophistication in handling these threats is growing and improving quickly. We will continue working with the government to understand the full extent of Russian interference. And we will do our part, not only to ensure the integrity of free and fair elections around the world, but also to give everyone a voice and to be a force for good in democracy everywhere. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll keep you updated with more soon.